Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, let me discuss to you the topics on the soil densities and soil porosity. Density represents the mass per unit volume of a substance with the formula density is equal to mass divided by volume. While in the soil, Soil density is expressed in two well-accepted concepts as particle density and bulk density. So we have two types of soil densities, which are the particle and the bulk density. So now let us first discuss what particle density is. So particle density, or PD, is the mass per unit volume of soil solids. So when you say soil solids, it is not affected by pore space and does not change easily. So remember our soil solid components, which are the mineral matter and organic matter. So in computing for the soil particle density, the pore space is not calculated. Only the soil solids are included in the calculation. Uh, this one is not related to the particle size or to the arrangement of particles. No, it is not um, related to the soil structure. Now, the particle density is higher if large amount of heavy minerals such as magnetite, limonite, and hematite or iron oxides are present in the soil. With increase in organic matter of the soil, the particle density decreases. So take note of this relationship. Increasing organic matter of the soil means decreasing particle density. Or the higher the organic matter of the soil, the lower the particle density is. Particle density is also known as the true density of the soil. The particle density of most mineral soils ranges from 2.6 to 2.75 grams per cubic meter. So it can be assumed that the particle density of a typical mineral soil has an average of 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, we are now finished with the particle density. Now let's look on the bulk density. For the bulk density, it is defined as the mass of a unit volume of dry soil. With the same unit as the particle density as grams per cubic centimeter. So unlike the particle density, in bulk density, when you say volume, it includes both the soil solids and the pore spaces. The bulk density of common surface soils ranges from 1.1 to 1.4 grams per cubic centimeter. While for common subsoils, it ranges from 1.3 to 1.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, if you can notice... The bulk density is smaller than the particle density. So as you can remember, the average particle density is 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. So please remember the statement that the bulk density is always smaller than the particle density because in this uh, type of soil density, the pore spaces are also included in the calculation. Now, bulk density normally decreases as mineral soils become finer in texture. So this is another relationship for you to remember. Oh, the finer the soil texture is, the lower the bulk density. And bulk density varies indirectly with the total pore space present in the soil which give a good estimate of the soil's porosity. When you say indirectly, as the bulk density decreases, 
the porosity of the soil increases. Now, bulk density is of greater importance than particle density in understanding the physical behavior of the soil. Uh, generally, soils with low bulk densities have favorable physical conditions. Now, bulk density is not an intrinsic property of a material. It can change depending on how the material is handled. And it depends greatly on the mineral makeup of the soil and the degree of compaction. Generally, if the soil has a high bulk density, it means that the soil is already compacted. Now, there are different factors affecting the soil bulk density, one of which is the pore space. Soils with a high proportion of pore space to solids have lower bulk densities than those that are more compact and have less pore space. Then, any factor that influences soil pore space will affect the bulk density. Now, another factor is the soil texture. Fine textured surface soils such as silt loams, clay and clay loams generally have lower bulk densities than sandy soils. Moreover, fine textured soils tend to organize in porous grains, especially because of adequate organic matter content. While in sandy soils, the solid particles lie close together resulting to higher bulk density. So this explains the relationship of the bulk density and the soil texture. Now aside from the pore spaces and the texture, there is the organic matter content and the depth of the soil profile. Now the more organic matter content in the soil results in high pore space thereby shows lower bulk density of the soil and vice versa. For the depth in the soil profile, generally subsoils have higher bulk densities than the surface soils because of the pressure that the surface soils is uh, in, that is inserting to the that is being applied to the uh, subsoils. So therefore there will be less aggregation, fewer roots and it may have compaction caused by the overlying layers. Now, we have tackled on the particle and the bulk density. Now, let's move in discussing the soil porosity. So, there are two kinds of, or rather three kinds of pore spaces in the soil. But before discussing those three kinds of pore spaces, let us define what is soil porosity. When you say porosity, it uh, refers to the volume of pores divided by the bulk volume, which has the formula of percent E is equal to the volume of pore spaces or VBS divided by the bulk volume or VB multiplied to 100. Or, it can be conveniently calculated from the data of particle density if it is present or available. And bulk density as percent E is equal to 1 minus bulk density divided by particle density multiplied to 100. Now, why do we need to study soil porosity? Because soil porosity directly influences soil water movement. When, when it comes to agriculture in growing plants, the movement of soil water is very important. Now, the size, the shape, and the interconnection of pore spaces are more important than the combined volume in determining the drainage, the aeration, and other processes that will affect our plants. Now, the amount of porosity in a soil depends on the minerals that make up the soil and the amount of sorting that occurs within the soil structure. For example, a sandy soil will have larger porosity than silty sand. 
That is because the silt will fill in the gaps between the sand particles. When the silt fill in the gaps between the sand particles, it will lead to compaction. Therefore, the drainage is affected. What else? The aeration is affected. Oh, therefore, the water availability to plants will be affected. Now, in studying soil pore space relations with water movement, one must be familiar with the following. First, we have is the hydraulic conductivity or K. It has the property of the soil that describes the ease with which water can move through pore spaces. And it can be measured at any state. Hydraulic conductivity depends on the permeability of the material and the degree of saturation. Next we have is infiltration. Infiltration is a process by which water on the ground surface enters the soil. The water enters the soil through the pores by the forces of gravity and capillary action. The largest cracks and pores offer a great reservoir for the initial flush of water, and this allows a rapid infiltration. The smaller pores take longer to fill and rely on the capillary forces as well as the gravity and have a slower infiltration as the soil becomes more saturated. Another factor that could affect the porosity of the soil is the cultivation and the soil management. The continuous cultivation, continuous tillage, and cropping reduces the macropores. However, there is what we call the conservation tillage. Examples of conservation tillage are the minimum, the no-till, or the mulch tillage, and many more. And this um, kind of tillage can increase the accumulation of organic matter, can develop a network of macropores or the biospores, and therefore it will create greater macroporosity. And, where, and when there is greater macroporosity or greater number of macropores, it will reduce the surface ceilings. No? when there is greater macroporosity of the surface layers. Now, let us move on on the discussion of the three types of pore spaces. One of which is the macropores or, or the macropores. These are too large to have any significant capillary force. And these pores are full of air at field capacity. Macropores can be caused by cracking, division of beds and aggregates, as well as plant roots and zoological exploration. And the size of the macropores is greater than 75 micrometers. We also have the mesopores. So this are soil pores filled with water at field capacity. They are also known as the storage pores because of the ability to store water useful to plants. They do not have capillary forces to great so that the water does not become limiting to the plant. So mesopores are really important because they are the ones that uh, which stores water for uh, the plants that are useful to the plants. Mesophores are ideally always full or contain liquid to have successful plant growth. And the size of the mesophores ranges from 30 to 75 micrometers. The last ones are the micropores. Micropores are pores that are filled with water at permanent welding point. Suction is required to remove water from this kind of pore spaces. The water associated is usually adsorbed onto the surfaces of the clay molecules. And water held in micropores is important to the activity of microbes, creating moist anaerobic conditions. So take note of that. If we are talking about the mesopores, 
it is related to the water storage for plant use. While when we talk about the water in the microbores, the water is for the microbial organisms. Uh, activity of microbes creating the moist anaerobic conditions. When water can also be used or water can also cause either oxidation or reduction of molecules in the crystalline structure of the soil minerals. And the size of the micropores is less than 30 micrometers. Now for my last slide, I would like to show you this table that illustrates the general relationship among the soil texture, the bulk density, and porosity. So as you can see based on the data, as the soil texture becomes finer, meaning from sand to clay, sand, sandy loam, the coarse textured soils to the finer textured soils such as the clay loam, clay, or aggregated clay, you can notice that the bulk density decreases so from 1.55 down below up to 1 megagram per cubic meter. For the porosity, porosity increases while the um, as the bulk or as the soil texture becomes finer. So meaning finer text, uh, fine textured soils have greater porosity than the coarse texture ones. So that is all for soil densities and porosities. I hope you learned from this simple presentation. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.